what I'm going to do here is answer this question, which is find and delete your YouTube watch history from myactivity.google.com. And I'm going to do that on a demo. Then I'm going to make it um, a little bit more in depth. So let's get on with the demo. And I found this again by accident that I'm using a secondary Google account here. And what you'll notice is that I've got a very, very small amount of watch history. If I hover over it, I can hit the cross and take away L. Fanning talking about first kissing on Conan the TV show because it doesn't kind of like fit with the other watch history things of mine. But this is the demonstration. What I found out was if you go down the bottom right here and it says manage all activity. And this is the light bulb moment, if you like, for me. And that is that what happens is that you're actually outside, in my opinion, of your YouTube account. You're still, of course, logged into the one Google account. And what we have down here is something where we can affect that change. In other words, we can come down and it clearly says, and you'll notice that the URL at the top says, my activity restrict equals YTW, which I presume stands for YouTube watch history. So then we can come down and it gives you a little explanation about the watch to um, history on YouTube. And then we said today we've got one item in YouTube, which is um, this account. In other words, me watched this particular video. Now I can look at the details, which opens. I don't know what that opens up, actually. What's the details? Let's just see, shall we? Yeah, OK, today at 1.36, you do God, talk about incriminating or what. But what we can <laughs> we can come down if someone's looking through your history is we can hit the three a button menu at the top right and we can delete it. So what I'm going to say is that deleting one item from your 21st of September YouTube can't be recovered. Do you want to do it? Um, yes, I do for the moment. So you've done it. So then you go back and you can s clearly see that this this page here needs to be refreshed. We refresh it and you will see that the item has disappeared. That's all I wanted to say, but this is the can of worms. When I call it can of worms, is that going a little bit more in depth, and these are the reasons why, is that if you go on, remember that if you're logged into your Google account, YouTube is a component or a part of that Google account. Remember, if you watch YouTube incognito, then it will kind of like sit on the edge here and your Google account will not know about it. So reasons for doing this. Number one on the bullet points is I'm establishing and with, with the help of this video is a link from your YouTube account to your Google account. So therefore you can affect a YouTube change outside of your YouTube URL or YouTube itself. Now, my tip here is that if you are approaching a new work um, project or a university school project, Keep any searches and your history separate from each other. For example, if you looked at the um, doing stuff at home or in your leisure, your spare time, keep that separate from work and study. You can do that by top right, making a separate Chrome login or a separate Google login. That's just a tip because when push comes to shove and we are studying or working hard, if you get distracted with what Conan or Jimmy Fallon or anybody else are doing you know, in there, bearing in mind that there may be tons of searches that you do, and I'll demonstrate that in one second. Last bullet point, this may um, philosophically help you think about your Google account or your Google activity as an extension of yourself and your behavior. And to go on to just an example in my main account, I put this little blue slide here to say that Google account, um, the component of that is YouTube, that you can see that just today in my main Google account, I've actually had 105 items go through my activity between Chrome, Android, searching, YouTubing. Yesterday, which is the big one here, 559 items came and went. Because remember, if you're searching for things and you're dealing with things, they're not all, all videos. They can be websites, they can be links, they can be apps, they can be all sorts of different things. But you'll see that it builds up over time. 105 with me, 559, 19th of September, 399. So, what I'm getting at is the, the last part here, or one of the last parts, is that when you start doing something like your My Activity, if you stick to the simplistic task, it's easy and you can get away with it. But it's a real can of worms sometimes, or a Pandora's box, because a simple task can be a complex 
crowded screen quite quickly and you can get frustrated and never visit again. Yet if you know the task or the, should we say, a different way of looking at something, then you can actually know that it's possibly worth it. And I'll just demonstrate that as an, as an idea. Because if you go in and back to this my activity thing, you're thinking, well, what I'm thinking is, where did I actually understand that came from? And to go into your Google account look, and this is the bit where, you know, I, I obviously do tons of search and I think that I can know my way around Google. And you've got all of these things. Can you see that there's no way that you're going to find, in my opinion, the YouTube history in here? So I'm thinking, well, if I was looking for it, where would it be? And I can come down here and I can say, I think, having just been there, that manage your Google activity may be in here where you get this thing called activity controls. And then you can go to the activity controls. And once, once you're in it, you can actually look at various other things like device and locations but if you go into managing your activity then this is best demonstrated by let me let me just reset this to um, zero because this is the bit where if people are still watching this video then they might get a bit you know um, deflated and they don't want to do anything anymore because I mean let's be honest we don't sit in here unless we've got a, a particular reason to go in you know this area so what you'll find on the left, just as an, an overview, is a bundle and an item view, and then other menus down the left-hand side. Similarly, there are things up on the right-hand side, which is the same bundle selections, and you can do various things. I want to finish and illustrate that simply by going over to the mobile site. And what that actually means is, he says, bringing the slidey bit down, to say that when you come into this My Activity from... Your Google account on mobile, you get a couple of welcome screens. It then goes on to say you've got this thing where you can filter the dates and the products or search for things, and you get those uh, sort of lime green item, Chrome, YouTube things coming up, bundle items. You can pause this video at any time and look what I've done. My activity, of course, was the video that I wanted to possibly delete, maybe Al Fanning on Jimmy Fallon. And then we go on to say that on mobile you can do exactly the same thing three button top right and then delete or bundle selections and and look in there similarly if you go over to the YouTube um, app then we do actually get a very very similar thing which is I think you can swipe it or I think or you can actually just uh, remove it from the watch history and I would say that's pretty much it and you can see how it's got to be I would say complicated but then again we do you know th hundreds of thousands of searches in a year I would say if not hundreds in a day and then you can see on the final part here that we can filter the Google products by all the products or we can go through to ads Android Chrome play help image searches maps search video search video search interesting which is not of course the YouTube one which is the one that we focused on here today so that was the tip which started off as find and delete your YouTube watch history from myactivity.google.com. Bit of a mouthful, isn't it, really? <laughs>